بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم بیک ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ایز یو ناؤ دیٹ ان دی لاسٹ کپل آف لیکچرس آئی ڈسکسڈ دی اینالیسز آف فالٹس ان پاور سسٹمس سو ود دائٹ آئی اینڈڈ دی second important topic that usually is covered in power um, system analysis course and uh, the third or the last important uh, topic that uh, need to be covered in a power system analysis course is related to the stability analysis so Uh, today i will start with the stability analysis and hopefully in the uh, one more lecture i will end um, the contents and with that then the course will also be ended so before starting the stability analysis let me uh, show you the uh, course outlines particularly um, the uh, material related to the course contents and also related to the course learning objectives so uh if we let's say read each of these uh points uh, i mean one by one so uh, it will be clear to you that where we are standing at the moment what we have covered and what we are supposed to cover so we started the course with the electricity basics and i give you an overview of the power system fundamentals then we also uh, i mean discuss the the phasers and three phase systems and then the uh, i mean the uh, important point where usually this course is started with is related to the per unit representation so we even covered the per unit representations and now i believe that you should be uh, i mean well acquainted uh, with the concepts of the per unit uh, representations afterwards we started discussing the modeling of the different uh, components of power systems for instance we discussed the transformers and its modeling then we also discussed the transmission lines and we i mean uh, quite in detail discuss the parameters of the transmission lines and then the different i mean uh, uh, models for instance short transmission line model medium transmission line model although i didn't cover in this course the long transmission line model but anyhow i mean uh, that is probably not that relevant to this particular course after covering the uh, per unit representation and the modeling of the different uh, components of the power system we started the power flow studies and we discussed the power flow study quite in detail we discussed the different i mean relay uh, the different equations we also talked about the bus admittance matrix and then we solved the power of flow problems using two different techniques one is gauss seidel method and one is newton raphson method any when i give you a demonstration in order to i mean clear your concept regarding the non linearity of the power flow problems and then afterwards we cover it took me uh, i mean couple of lectures to cover the course content related to the fault studies so majorly in this course three topics are covered one is related to the power flow studies the other is related to the fault studies and the last topic uh, is related to the power system stability analysis so we have covered all these contents and i just need to cover the last topic related to the power system stability and with that we will end the course and i mean uh, if you remember i told you in the very first class that uh, these are the proposed objectives that we are i mean aiming that students must achieve after completing the course so i mean uh let's say that we are supposed to cover the power system stability analysis and we have covered already the other content so let have a look into the objectives that i i mean even show you in the beginning of this lecture and let's say 
I mean, now, uh, once again, uh, looking into those objectives and, I mean, uh, 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 analyzing whether we have covered those objectives or not. So, the first objective was related to the to the understanding of the fundamental concept related to electrical power systems and its constituting components. So, we covered the fundamental concepts and we also covered the different uh, components that constitute power system. For instance, uh, transmission lines, transformers, loads uh, and also the generation. So, I mean, I covered couple of these components uh, in detail. And, and if you remember, even I talked about these, uh, I mean, talked about these components we were, when we were discussing the, the sequence components. So I discussed the four components of the power system, especially when we were, I mean, discussing the sequence components. And those components are uh, uh, loads, uh, transmission lines, uh, and rotating machines. And then we also covered the uh, transformers. So, I mean, the first objective was related to the understanding of the concept related to electrical power system and its constituent components. So, I hope now, if you look, I mean, at this stage where we have covered almost, I mean, the whole content except the power system stability analysis. So, you can clearly see that we have discussed in detail, I mean, the different components of power system. And now, I hope you should be, uh, I mean, very well acquainted with the concepts related to the electrical power systems. The second objective was related to the application of different techniques for solving power flow problems. We have discussed two in detail. Anyone recently you have submitted an assignment related to the newton Dobson method. So I hope you should now be uh, well acquainted with the um, power flow problems and you should also know that this particular uh, problem related to the power flow is non-linear in nature and we need iterative methods to solve the problem and we discussed two in detail Gauss serial and Newton Upson. So now you should be able to apply techniques for solving power flow problems. The third objective is related to the examining of electrical systems when they are subjected to balanced and unbalanced faults. and in the last I mean I would say uh, five, six lectures. I quite in detail discuss the uh, power systems when they are subjected to faults. And I mean, once again, if I let's say give a simple definition of a fault, so I would like to say that even I, I, I mean, repeated it quite many times during my lectures. And the the definition is that whenever the power system uh, parameters quantities of interest when they exceed the allowable limit. For instance, we have, I mean, uh, discussed that the normal operating uh, limits for the voltage should be between 1.05 to 0.95 per unit. So if, let's say, uh, for the voltage, if the uh, operating voltage or the system voltage, if it exceeds the allowable limits, so then that condition is characterized as a fault. Similarly is the case of the, of the frequency. If it exceeds the allowable limit, so that condition is, I mean, uh, characterized as a fault. So we discuss the fault in general and we also discuss the reasons that could cause the, the fault in a system. And then we majorly uh, characterized the, the faults into two categories. One is the balance fault and one, is, one are the unbalanced faults. We started discussing the balanced faults and we even uh, discuss a method for analyzing power systems when they are subjected to balanced faults. After covering the, the balanced fault and even solving a problem on the balanced fault, we uh, started discussing uh, the uh, unbalanced faults. And in the beginning, I mean, I talked about the symmetrical components which are the key to analyze uh, unbalanced faults and then I uh, I mean solve a couple of problems even we theoretically discuss the symmetrical components we solve problems and afterwards I started discussion on the on the sequence components and then 
I mean I solved problems where we took the whole power system having all the major components I mean generation transmission and utilization also we consider transformers and then for the whole system we uh, draw the sequence networks and then I even solve I mean one problem related to the single line to ground fault and I, I mentioned that maybe the rest of the the other types of the unbalanced fault you may cover it in some other course so we even discuss the faults quite in detail both balanced and unbalanced faults so I mean the third objective if now you look to uh, I mean if one read the the text it is clear that after the completion of the course the student should be able to examine electrical power systems when the uh, when they are subjected to balanced and unbalanced faults so we have covered all these three objectives so I mean these were the objectives that I show you in the very first class and now at this stage while we have covered almost the whole course except the power system stability analysis which I believe will take two more lectures one uh, today's lecture and one more lecture and with that we will end the uh, the course and we will uh, I mean and I will say that successfully we have uh, covered all the all the contents of the course so I mean we have covered these three objectives and the last objective is related to the uh, I mean stability analysis of electrical power system so we have covered all the three quite in detail and now I will start with the stability analysis so I mean we have covered the contents also the objectives and now let's start with the stability analysis so in today's lecture and in one more lecture I will talk about the stability analysis and that will be the end of the course so now let's start discussing the power system stability and uh, in this course I mean in this lecture I will talk about an important equation known as swing equation so uh, let's start talking about the uh, power system stability so uh, Stability, uh, I mean, uh, in general, refers to to the to the tendency of a power system to develop restoring forces equal to or greater than the disturbing forces. Because you know, I mean, uh, power system could be subjected to disturbances, and disturbance, I mean, could be even a fault. Fault is a type of disturbance, and I have discussed that. I mean, fault refers to a condition when the parameters of the system are no more within the allowable limit so disturbance could be uh, even a fault oh i mean there are also other types of disturbances so uh, stability relates to the to the to the i mean uh, tendency of a power system to develop restoring forces equal to or greater than the disturbing forces to maintain the state of equilibrium we will talk about the state of equilibrium so that is known as stability so the uh, restoring forces should be equal to or greater than the disturbing forces in order to ensure the state of equilibrium which we know as stability and if the forces tending to hold machine in synchronism I have talked about synchronism if you remember so uh, I mean uh, in general in these uh, I mean uh, topic or in this particular topic related to stability we will mostly consider the the generators the synchronous generators so that's why we have here the term synchronism of the of the machine so if the force is tending to hold machines which we mean synchronous machine and synchronism and you have I mean you know what is synchronism where uh, the the uh, the parameters of the of the of the um, generator involving I'm uh, including the voltage magnitude the phases the sequence and the phasing if they are equal to that of the system so then I mean this machine is in synchronism with the with the with the system that's what we call synchronism so couple of conditions need to be fulfilled for making a machine uh, synchronized with the with the system before connecting it so if it let's say a machine is, synch is synchronized it means the parameters of the machine 
are the same, more or less the same, as that of the of the system. So, if the force is tending to hold machine in synchronism, what we call basically restoring forces, with one another are sufficient to overcome the disturbances forces, the system is said to be remain, remain stable, to stay in synchronism. So, I mean this is in general the definition of the of the stability. And uh, the stability problem is concerned with the behavior of synchronous machines after a disturbance. So, I mean stability problem is related with the with the behavior of the synchronous machines, mostly I mean synchronous generator after they are subjected to a to a fault or to a disturbance because fault is a type of a disturbance. So, stability problems are generally divided into two major categories. We have now made the definition of the stability and stability as I, as I mentioned that it is related mostly with the uh, synchronous uh, machines. So, if I mean uh, if they remain synchronized, synchronized with the system even if when they are subjected to a fault, so then the system will remain stable. And stability is majorly categorized into two types. One is steady state stability and the other type is the transient stability. So now uh, let's uh, even further define these two uh, categories. So uh, uh, the power system uh, stability can be of several types depending upon the nature of disturbance and can be majorly classified into, two, into the following two types. One is the steady state stability. And steady state stability refers to the ability of power system to regain synchronism as I have discussed when uh, let's say a machine is subjected to some uh, disturbance and it regains the synchronism within a very short interval. So then and if the disturbance nature is such that it is small in magnitude and could be even continuous. For instance changes in the load which I mean at every instant the load changes but if those changes are let's say continuous and the change and the, and the amplitude of the change is small so then uh, I mean the machine will remain in a synchronism with the, with the rest of the system and we call such class of stability as steady state stability so in a steady state stability we majorly take the small changes in the system which could possibly happen due to the changes in the load the other type of stability where we uh, basically consider uh, sudden disturbances such as the occurrence of a fault, the sudden outage of a line for instance a line gets broken or the sudden application or removal of loads. If let's say uh, suddenly uh, large loads, large amount of loads are applied so then or it is removed from the system so that could possibly lead the uh, system into the state of the transient stability so transient stability studies are needed to ensure that the system can withstand the transient condition following a major disturbance so in the steady state stability we mostly take the small changes for instance the uh, changes in the load gradual could be even continuous and in transient stability large disturbances are considered which could possibly be let's say a fault or the removal or sudden application of uh, I mean uh, heavy loads. So in this course I will majorly talk about the transient stability because um, that is quite important as I mean uh, faults can appear in the system also a line can get let's say out of the system so I mean in this course I will mostly talk about the transient stability so let's talk now about the, the transient stability so power system transient stability in order to operate as an interconnected system uh, all of the generators and other synchronous machine must remain in synchronism with one another so all the uh, let's say generators that feed the, the power system so they should remain in synchronism with one another 
and I discuss that what conditions are required for ensuring the synchronism of let's say machine with the system. So in order to operate as an interconnected system we have discussed the interconnected system before. All of the generators must remain in synchronism with one another. Loss of synchronism if let's say uh, the uh, individual parameter of a machine if they do not I mean uh, follow or if they are not equal to that of the system so that then we call basically the loss of synchronism of that particular machine. So loss of synchronism result in a condition in which no net power can be transferred between the machines or between the machine and then the system. We, we will discuss that uh, later in this uh, lecture. A system is said to be transiently unstable if following a disturbance one or more of the generator lose synchronism. So if a disturbance is of such nature that uh, with an I mean short interval if the machine lose the synchronism so we call the system to be transiently unstable. So once again if the disturbance is of such a nature that it I mean uh, causes the loss of synchronism of one or more machine so that system is then uh, characterized to be transiently unstable. So uh, some more contents generator uh, transient stability models because we as I mentioned we need to, to analyze the transient stability. So for that we need uh, the generator transient stability model and as even I, I mentioned that in the stability analysis we will be mostly talking about the generators. Because a system is said to be uh, transiently unstable if the uh, synchronism is lost and synchronism is related with, with the generator where the uh, parameters of the generator or the, the quantity of interest are no more equal to that of the system parameters. So then we call the loss of synchronism. So I mean uh, the stability is mostly related with the, with the generator and we will discuss that in this particular course. So uh, I mean in order to analyze the, the transient stability of a power system we need to develop models for the generator valid during the transient time frame of several seconds. If you remember when we were discussing the, the current profile uh, when a fault appears we discussed that we have initially sub-transient current then we have a transient current and then we have the steady state current. So uh, transient stability uh, for generator valid during the transient time frame of several seconds. So I mean transient period is of several seconds when a uh, system is subjected to a disturbance and we mentioned that that disturbance should be of I mean uh, nature what we call the uh, large disturbances or major disturbances. So if a system I mean is subjected to a major disturbance which could be let's say a fault or could be the uh, I mean a line I mean when a line gets broken so that's or I mean when a sudden heavy load is applied or removed so those all those uh, I mean uh, conditions are uh, existing within the uh, transient stability analysis. So we need to develop as I, as I mentioned we need to develop both electrical and mechanical models for the generators in order to analyze the transient stability uh, of the of the generator. So we need both models for analyzing the transient stability of the generator. So let's start first with the generator electrical model and then we will also discuss the mechanical model. So uh, this is basically electrical model and if you remember we discussed that even before that in the transient state uh, the generator is treated as a voltage source behind a transient reactance so behind I mean the generator is treated as a I mean as a voltage source behind a transient reactance 
The voltage magnitude is fixed, but its angle changes according to the mechanical dynamics, and we will discuss that. So, uh, we have even, uh, I mean, uh, talked about this expression. Uh, um, I mean, when we were discussing the two port equations and when we were discussing the sensitivity of the active and reactive power to different parameters. So, we discussed this expression at that time. Uh, and if, I mean, if you look to this expression, it states that the electrical power which is dependent on a particular angle, I will talk about this angle um, later on in this course, in this lecture. So, the electrical power is, this is what we call load angle or we call it also the power angle or the, uh, uh, we also call it the, uh, I think the torque angle as well. So, but anyhow, this angle, what we call the load angle, uh, I mean, uh, the active power is related with the is sensitive to the load angle and uh, the expression says that it is related with the sign of that angle. Vt is the terminal voltage, A is the generated voltage and this is the transient reactance. So, the, the generator electrical model looks like that where we have a transient reactance and the voltage magnitude is fixed and its angle changes. So, the generator model is treated as a voltage source behind a transient reactance where the voltage magnitude is fixed and its angle changes according to the mechanical dynamics. So, this is the generator electrical model and we discussed that even before. So, as I mentioned, uh, I mean in uh, before that for the for carrying the transient stability analysis, we need to develop both electrical and mechanical models of the generator. So now we have talked about the, the electrical model and now I will start discussing the mechanical model. Uh, as we have, I mean, discussed the electrical model even before, so it was just a revision of that, but the mechanical model, uh, we haven't discussed it, so please pay a bit more attention uh, to the mechanical uh, model of the, of the generator. This is the, uh, I mean, schematic uh, diagram where a boiler, um, a valve, a turbine, and a generator is shown. I mean, we need to 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 run the, to to I mean to run the generator, whether we run it by means of a hydro turbine or by means of a steam turbine or it could be other types. But anyhow, this is the mechanical model. Where turbine need to be rotated and that and that then I mean connected to the to the generator which rotate the rotor of the of the generator. So this is the uh, I mean schematic model of the of the uh, generator or the block diagram where the uh, I mean the uh, fuel which could be either in the form of steam or could be in the form of water which need to rotate the turbine and then the turbine will rotate the generator. So, as you know by definition that generator is a machine which convert mechanical power into electrical power. So, uh, for rotating the turbine we should have mechanical torque and then after the uh, rotation of the generator uh, we have electrical torque. So, mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy. And and now, because it is, I mean, the conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy, so uh, we have an expression here which relate the electrical torque, the damping torque, and the acceleration of the generator to the mechanical torque. So, the mechanical torque must be equal to the sum of these three terms. I hope you have discussed the general form of the torque when, we, when you were studying the uh, electrical machine. Anyhow, uh, I mean, if you haven't studied, so I will talk about that expression. So, the mechanical torque, because it is the case of the of the generator, so the mechanical torque must be equal to the acceleration torque plus the damping torque plus the electrical torque, which is now dependent on the load angle. So, uh, this is the mechanical input torque having a unit of Newton meter, you know that. J is the moment of inertia of turbine and rotor. Alpha m is the angular acceleration of turbine and rotor. This is the damping torque, Td. 
uh, we will I mean sort of uh, neglect this term in the uh, I mean we will, we will move, when we will discussing most of the contents related to the to the uh, stability analysis but anyhow in a general expression it appears we have this damping torque or what we also call the friction torque so uh, you know about the damping uh, and this is the elect electrical torque equivalent electrical torque depending on this load angle so this is the uh, mechanical model and now let's talk about some more mathematical expressions in general if you remember I, I even discuss it in the class if I am not wrong uh, we discuss that in general the power or the shaft power is equal to the product of torque and omega that we have I think discussed so uh, but anyhow if, if, if I haven't discussed it so the shaft power is equal to the product of torque and the angular speed so now let's talk about some more mathematical uh, expressions so uh, I mean in general power as I have discussed that it is equal to the torque plus the I mean torque into the angular speed hence when a generator is spinning at I mean at the speed omega s what we call because we are talking about a synchronous generator so that's why it is omega s and you should know that the speed of the synchronous generator uh, it remains constant that is important in the DC machine when we let's say uh, increase the load the speed of the machine drops but in the case of the synchronous machine the speed remains constant it's another parameter which varies and that parameter is basically the load angle so the speed remains constant if one let's say one draw the torque and the speed uh, that no, I mean and show the, the variation of the speed with respect to the torque so you will see that uh, within an acceptable limit uh, by increasing let's say the load the speed remains constant it's the angle which changes but in the in the DC machine the speed changes basically with the with the increase in the load or decrease in the load but here the speed remains constant because these are synchronous machines it's the angle that changes with the increase or decrease in the load so uh, once again the mechanical torque is equal to these three terms and by multiplying omega s on both sides we will have the power equal to this particular expression so uh, we will now assume that the damping is zero then the uh, expression can be rewritten as the difference of the mechanical and electrical power is equal to j alpha m which is the acceleration omega s pm is the mechanical input power which is assumed to be constant that is important we will assume the mechanical power to be constant throughout the study period this is important so even in the rest of the of the contents that i will discuss related to the stability we will assume that mechanical power remain constant throughout the study period so now the difference of the two powers is equal to j which is the moment of inertia acceleration and angular speed or the synchronous speed so uh, some more mathematics the uh, difference of these two power once again equal to this one and uh, now I will I mean introduce a new uh, parameter what we call the rotor angle so the rotor angle is equal to the sum of two angles because you know the product of the angular spin of time is also angle and this is the what we call the load angle this is initially the I mean the angle this angle is the rotor position before disturbance at time t equal to zero so if let's say there is no disturbance or if let's say we want a disturbance appears but before the disturbance at time t equal to zero because at if we consider time t equal to zero and before the disturbance so then this term will be zero and the load angle will be this value but if a disturbance appear so as I mentioned that during that time the angle changes so uh, in addition to the initial angle then there will be some more angle that we add together to get the zero total rotor angle so let's now talk about a bit about the rotor angle uh, although you ha I think you haven't 
discuss this uh, in detail but uh, I will try to make it I mean clear to you this is the uh, case of the uh, two uh, fields because you know that uh, I mean for the operation of a machine at least one field must have to be rotated at least one field should rotate in the case of the, the DC where the rotor rotate and the stator basically the field because we supply it with the DC so that field is static but in the case of the, the synchronous machines both fields are rotating we supply the stator with three phase current which produce a rotating magnetic field you know that when a, I mean when we have a three phase current so then the resultant field is rotating and also the rotor is rotating so in this case both these fields rotate and the angle between the two fields is known as the load angle now uh, this is basically the stator this is the stator side and that is the rotor side so this is the north pole this is the south pole and the sh situation should be opposite here this should be the north pole and this should be the south pole and it's also important to mention here right the in synchronous operation the two poles they get locked the opposite poles south and north it get locked and that's why they rotate because once they get locked so even if you increase the load with an acceptable limit the speed remains the same and if we let's say increase or decrease the load so this angle can vary so initially let's say that is the angle this is the initial angle and when a disturbance appear either in the form of a fault or in the form of a removal of a load or in the increase of a load so then this angle will vary so initially we represent this angle to be delta plus when the disturbance appears a value is added to that angle so then we have the total rotor angle so now i hope this should be clear to you so before the disturbance let's say this is the angle and when the disturbance appears then this angle will change so we add let's say we call this initial angle and then we add a value to that to get the total rotor angle i will even talk about this particular i mean uh, presentation later on so delta i mean is the rotor position before disturbance at time t equal to zero and let's say then some more mathematics uh, if one is interested i mean this whole proof is uh, available in the book in the course book so you can follow that but anyhow i mean that is not that important so after some more math mathematical steps we finally get an expression where the difference of the two power is related with the uh, I mean differential it's a differential equation second order differential equation where this is the rotor angle and m is a constant and related with the kinetic energy of the rotating masses why this particular uh, expression m is a constant and this is the rotor angle and this is a double I mean second order differential equation so the difference of the two will is equal to the second order derivative with respect to time of the of the angle and this is the constant now as i mentioned that if let's say because i i discussed that throughout the the analysis period we will assume that the mechanical power is uh, constant but when let's say there is an uh, increase or decrease in the in the load because synchronous generator are I mean designed to supply electrical power to the to the load so if let's say there is a disturbance where the load suddenly increase or decrease it means there will be change in the electrical power we assume the mechanical power to be constant throughout this uh, study period so then if let's say there is a change in this quantity it means correspondingly there will be change on the uh, left side since m is constant it means that the angle will change as i mentioned that the speed remains the same when the disturbance is within an acceptable limit but the angle changes and that changes due to the change in the electrical power because we assume the mechanical power to be constant throughout the study period so this particular expression is known as where m is related to this uh, to the kinetic energy and the angular 
speed, synchronous speed which is constant. So this is constant and related to the kinetic energy. This is the angular speed, synchronous speed which is constant. So this particular expression is known as swing equation. So as I mentioned in the in the uh, beginning of the of the lecture that in this lecture I will talk about the swing equation. So this particular expression, although it has some other forms as well that we will discuss in the in the next lecture. So uh, then we will also consider some more parameters. But this expression, which relates the difference of the mechanical and electrical power to the second order derivative of the rotor angle is known as swing equation and now let's say as we neglected damping in the beginning now if we add the damping term so this expression become like that and now we are representing the derivative like that it is equal to d by dt so this expression can be one written like that where m is a constant this represent the uh, second order derivative let's say this is angle yeah so this is the uh, the single order uh, i mean the first order derivative and if we put two dots then it will represent the second order derivative of the uh, rotor angle so this expression this is the same only the derivative of the rotor angle is replaced with the I mean dot on the top of the rotor angle and two dots representing first order derivative, second order derivative. So I mean now we have talked about the mechanical model and also we have I mean discussed the swing equation which relates the difference of the two power mechanical minus electrical because it's a generator we are talking about generator where we know that the mechanical power is converted into electrical power. So the difference of the two power I mean will determine the uh, the angle so swing equation relate the difference of the two power to the second order derivative of the of the angle m is a constant so now uh, we have talked about the swing equation and now let's to i mean further discuss the the stability let's take some example and then i will try to make the i mean concepts more clear to you and we will apply i mean even this expression to determine whether a system when subjected to uh, disturbance and we are considering large disturbances whether the system will be stable or not and uh, how will be the dynamics of the whole system we will discuss that so uh, let's take the uh, example uh, where a generator is connected to an infinite bus an infinite bus is a bus where the magnitude and the angle uh, are both fixed and that we know as the uh, infinite bus so uh, this is basically an infinite bus where there could be anything after that bus because it's infinite so one can consider i mean uh, afterwards this bus many different i mean components of, of the power system so this is an infinite bus where uh, it is defined as a bus having fixed voltage and fixed angle so the angle magnitude as you know in the per unit system uh, it is one if the nominal voltage is the same as the base value of the voltage because when we convert the per unit quantities i mean the quantities in the per unit we divide the actual quantity divided by the base quantity so if both are equal then the voltage magnitude will be one in per unit so this is per unit value so now this with the help of some example we try to uh, i mean analyze the system stability so uh, this is the case where a thing i mean a generator is connected to an infinite bus through a reactance uh, through uh, a transmission line having an impedance except so uh, we are considering a lossless transmission line because the resistance of the transmission line is zero and through this transmission line a generator is connected to an infinite bus where the magnitude of the voltage is constant also the angle is fixed so now uh, 
the models that we have discussed both the electrical and the and the mechanical models so now let's talk about the uh, models and try to uh, i mean uh, discuss the concepts related to the to the stability so now this particular situation can be represented like that where this represent i mean this is the single machine infinite bus so an infinite bus is only connected to a single machine via transmission line having an impedance j etc so uh, this represent the single machine infinite bus and it's continued so that situation which we have uh, discussed here it can be equivalently represented like that this is the uh, induced voltage of the or this is the generated voltage having a magnitude ea and an angle delta that changes when there is a change in the in the load and then this is the because as we have discussed that we are talking about the transient stability analysis so we are considering the transient reactors this is the transient reactors we have discussed that when we were talking about the transient subtransient and steady state inductive reactants of the synchronous machine so as we are discussing the transient stability analysis so this is the transient uh, reactance and if you remember we discussed that the reactance of the machine it changes with time we discussed that before because the uh, linking or the linkage of the flux uh, at i mean uh, is different for the transient sub for the sub transient transient and steady state condition so we discussed that the reactance it varies with the time during the default condition where we initially we have a sub transient reactance then we have a transient reactance and then we have a steady state reactance so but anyhow we are talking about the transient stability so that's why we consider the transient reactance and this is the uh, inductive reactance of the transmission line so this is now the situation that we discussed here now it is represented like that where we consider the transient reactance of the synchronous machine also the reactance of the of the transmission line and that is the infinite bus having a magnitude of 1 and angle of 0 that is an infinite bus and this is the uh, generated voltage of the uh, of the synchronous generator so now the electrical power as we discussed that uh, it is i mean related with the when we were discussing the 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 electrical uh, model so we discussed that the active power it is related with the voltages and also the sign of the load angle so now for this particular situation the flow of the active power where we have the i mean the uh, infinite bus voltage is 1 per unit so this expression and also we have now two i mean inductive reactances so we will take both into account and then this particular uh, expression will uh, i mean uh, be represented like that where the terminal voltage or the voltage on the on the infinite bus having a magnitude of 1 an angle of 0 so now we can write i mean the active power like that this is the generated voltage having an angle which is related i mean like that we take the sign of the angle because the power active power is sensitive to the load angle and the sign term is involved and this is the sum of the two inductive reactances once again uh, if you remember we discussed when we were talking about the mechanical model when we were talking about the the uh, generator swing equation so we uh, discuss that the swing equation relates the difference of the two power mechanical minus electrical to the second order derivative of the of the load angle here we also consider the damping but even one can neglect this term so now the difference of the two power by a swing equation is related to the, the second order derivative of the of the load angle so uh, this is the same angle and this is the difference of the two power where this is the mechanical power and this is the electrical power so we put the i mean the value 
from this expression. So this become now the situation. So some further, uh, I mean, uh, mathematics. And now we will talk about some important points even. Uh, if you remember, I, I even discussed that uh, in the uh, equilibrium, I mean, in, in, this, in the uh, stability, where uh, we, uh, I mean, uh, consider that the disturbing forces are lower than the maintaining forces, so then the state of equilibrium will be maintained. So what is the state of equilibrium? Let's talk about now, right? So, I mean, uh, for a system to be stable, the state of equilibrium must be maintained. So now, uh, equilibrium points are determined. Equilibrium points will be determined by putting the, the left side uh, to zero. So by setting the uh, left side of this equation into zero, we will determine the uh, equilibrium points. So by now, I mean putting the left side, uh, I mean I by mistake have put here the right side, so it is the left side actually. So by putting the left hand side to zero, uh, we will get the uh, equilibrium points and as I have even uh, discuss that if uh, if one look to this particular expression um, where the active power is related to the sign of the angle and also the voltages and the reactance so if one want, if one draw it it means that it will be a uh, it will be of sinusoidal shape so that is shown here so now, as even I have discussed before, that mechanical power we will assume, this is the, the straight line shows the mechanical power and I discussed that throughout this study period, we will assume the mechanical power to be constant. So now, this is the mechanical power, this is in general the axis of the power and uh, this is the electrical power. The whole profile, the variation of the electrical power due to the, the changes in the angle. Because this is magnitude is fixed, these two are fixed. It is only the angle that can vary. So this is the profile for the electrical power when the load angle is varied from value of zero to pi. So now uh, I mean it intersect the mechanical power at two points. Uh, this point is stable and this point is unstable. I will discuss that. Uh, now, by as I said, I, as I mentioned, that equilibrium points can be determined by setting the left side, the left hand side to zero. So, by putting the left hand side to zero, uh, now uh, we define, I mean, the sum of these two to be xth. This is the total, I mean, this is the sum of the two inductive reactances, that of the generator and that of the transmission line. So, now delta after putting it equal to xth and I mean bringing this on to the right side and then dividing it with this uh, term and taking the inverse of the sign, the expression looks like that. This will become xth, putting that on this side, then we multiply it with this term and we will divide with Ea and take the inverse of the sign to get the angle. So now as I mentioned that this is the, I mean, this is the, the straight line shows the mechanical power because we are assuming the mechanical power to, to be constant throughout the analysis of the transient stability. So the mechanical power is constant and this is the variation of the electrical power with respect to the angle. And now as one can see that uh, the intersection, these are two intersection points. One is this one and one is this one. This is the theoretical maximum at an angle of pi because when the uh, pi, uh, sorry, when the when the load angle will be uh, when the load angle will be 90, then the electrical power will be maximum because the sine of the 90 is one. 
so uh, the, uh, the 90 theoretically gives the maximum power although I need to I will discuss that in practice never I mean a generator is operated at a 90 degree it is operated far below the 90 degree because that is the theoretically the, the point where even if let's say a disturbance exceed by a small value then the system will be uh, I mean unstable it will the system will lose the synchronism we I will talk about that but anyhow I was discussing that now one can see from the intersection points that I mean this electrical power and the mechanical power they intersect at two point one is this one one is this one so as long as the system I mean operate at this value of the angle it is stable if let's say we have an angle during the transient period when the sudden load will be uh, I mean uh, let's say when, uh, when a sudden disturbance uh, will appear or when the system will be subjected to a sudden to a sudden large disturbance then during that period what we call the transient period if the angle let's say move to this point the system will lose the synchronism so we need to analyze during that period what is the value of the angle because that will show us whether the system during that period of transient uh, duration whether the system will remain in a stability or the system will lose the, the stability or the system will lose the synchronism so that's why it is important so as one can see here one is this operating point and one is this operating point so uh, now uh, for transient stability analysis as I mentioned we need to analyze the transient stability we need to analyze the stability of the system within the transient period in order to determine whether the system will be stable during that period or it will lose the uh, let's say the synchronism because that analysis will tell us what should be the clearing time of let's say a fault because fault is also a disturbance so what should be the clearing time of the fault in order to ensure that the state the system will still not lose the synchronism that's why we need to carry that analysis but anyhow here the profile of the electrical power and that of the uh, mechanical power and the two intersection points are, are shown so either this could be the operating point or could be that one so if it moves let's say to this point during the transient period the system will lose stability the system will no more be in synchronism so for the transient stability analysis we need to consider the system under the following three conditions for analyzing the system during the transient stability we need to consider the system under three conditions one is pre-fault or pre-disturbance but here, let's say if we are considering fault as a as a as a major disturbance because fault is a type of disturbance so let's I mean uh, confine the discussion to the fault where fault is a disturbance and fault is a major disturbance so now to analyze the uh, transient stability we need to consider the system under three different conditions one is pre-fault where let's say there is no disturbance has appeared so before the fault occurs the system is assumed to be at equilibrium point so as I discussed that let's say that is the operating point before the fault appear so this is the this is at equilibrium point the system is stable and when the fault appear which is a major disturbance so the fault changes the system equations it even changes the system state moving the system away from its equilibrium point so when the fault appear during that time as I mentioned the electrical power will vary because the load angle will change when the disturbance appear and if the, if the disturbance appear it means that if there will be variation in this uh, difference because PM is constant mechanical power but electrical power can vary so it means it will cause the change in the angle so if this term varies and let's say we, we neglect the damping so this angle this is the double this is the second order derivative of the angle because m is constant so if this there is change on the right side there must be change on the left side so that's why i mean i as i mentioned that if there is a disturbance which will vary the electrical power corresponding to the angle will change so this is the equilibrium point before the fault where the system is running stable and if let's say there is a fault which is a major disturbance 
So then the angle will change because the difference of the two power will change. So the fault changes the system equations, moving the system away from its equilibrium point. So it will move the system away from the equilibrium point. So now we have also to analyze the post fault uh, condition. After fault is cleared, within I mean the time it is important. Clearing time, the fault clearing time is important to know. So I mean during that time the angle should not exceed theoretically pi by 2. Why I will discuss that. So after fault is cleared, the system hopefully returns to a new operating point. So, uh, I mean, uh, theoretically, this angle should never exceed pi by 2. I am talking theoretically. In practice, it is skipped much lower than pi by 2. Why? I, I will discuss that. So, I mean, for the transient stability analysis, we need to analyze the system under these three conditions. Pre-fault, where the system is stable and it is at equilibrium point. Fault it when a, when a major disturbance appear and then uh, it changes the system equations moving the system away from the equilibrium point and then the post fault analysis to determine whether the system hopefully returns to a new operating point but still uh, I mean a new operating point will still be the point where the system will still remain stable because if the angle is I mean less than theoretically less than pi by 2 or it's less than pi by 2 so then the system will still remain stable. So that's why we need to consider or carry analysis of the system under all these three conditions. So uh, some more discussion that uh, the transient stability solution methods because we need to analyze the transient stability of the, of the system. So there are two methods for solving transient stability problem. One is numerical integration where we consider I mean uh, a large system having many buses and could have many generators and many other uh, components constituting power system. So this is far the most common technique particularly for large system. During the fault and after the fault the power system differential equations are solved using numerical methods. So as I have I mean discussed that we have the second order differential equation. So correspondingly we have a large system the differential equations are supposed to be solved using numerical methods. So these are numerical techniques. I don't know if you are familiar with the numerical methods or not. But anyhow, for large scale power systems, numerical methods are applied to uh, analyze the, 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 the system before and after the fault. So I mean the differential equations are solved using numerical techniques and then uh, the uh, post, I mean the, the the during the fault and the, the post and the uh, faulty uh, and during the fault the system is analyzed. So I mean for large system uh, numerical methods are used where differential equations are solved. Another method is what we call direct or energy method and that is uh, either applied for a two bus system I mean for it is applied for a two bus system. This method is known as equal, critic, equal area criteria. So if we have two bus system so then uh, another method for uh, I mean determining the stability of the system or to proceed with the uh, solution of the of the and uh, the transient stability uh, another method what we call direct or energy method so this is applied I mean for a two bus system and is known as equal area criteria I will talk about the equal area criteria in the next recorded lecture and that technique which is I mean applied to small systems is mostly used to provide an intuitive insight into the transient stability problem. So in the equal area criteria, we do not solve the differential equation, we describe the system. So I mean in this uh, method, the, so the, the, the equation is not solved. Rather based on another, uh, I mean rather based on, an, on a graphical representation, the uh, stability of the system uh, is analyzed or predicted or determined. So in this method, which is the numerical method, differential equation describing the system because we have talked about the differential equation. So these differential equations, the, they describe the system having both, I mean, uh, mechanical electrical power. So these, these differential equations that describe the system and if it's a large scale system, uh, then the differential equations describing the system are solved using numerical techniques 
but for a small scale system having let's say two buses we use another method that is what we call direct on energy method and based on some graphical representation of the energy or determining the energy so, but anyhow this method is based on a graphical representation so uh, this we will discuss in the next recorded lecture so now these are i mean the solution methods of the tangent stability and now let me uh, talk about uh, uh, an example where uh, we will uh, discuss some more uh, i mean contents so uh, let's take the example of a single machine infinite bus so a single machine is connected to an infinite bus through two parallel transmission lines i mean these transmission lines uh, one or two you should remember that is the single line diagram each line have three phases i mean phase a phase b and phase c but these are two parallel transmission lines each having three phases so i mean this is usually uh, required when we are supposed to transmit large amount of power so uh, but anyhow uh, i hope you have covered this or i i think you will you will discuss about the transmission lines uh, in another course probably in the next semester related to the transmission uh, i mean power system power transmissions i believe but anyhow you will talk about the transmission more in detail in the in the course uh, in the seventh semester so these are two transmission lines each having three phases but in a you know in a in a one line diagram we only represent one phase in a balanced system we represent just one phase so these are two transmission lines each having three phases and in this particular case because it's one line diagram we just show one phase so these are two transmission lines required when let's say a uh, large amount of electrical power need to be transmitted these are circuit breakers i hope you remember when we were discussing the the uh, pdu i mean in, in the course on pdu when we were discussing the Uh, protection of the different uh, components of the power system so these are circuit breakers which we need which need to i mean break the line if let's say a fault appear but uh, you know circuit breaker i mean it works in coordination with the relay so the relay when a fault appear and i discussed that what is fault basically so we have discussed that so when a fault appear a relay will detect the fault and then it will send a signal to the circuit breaker and circuit breaker will open the line so it takes some time because that's why we have clearing time fault to be clear i mean as soon as possible ideally in no time but i mean all these devices to operate it takes some time before the fault is clear or before let's say the, the line is broken so during that time the system need to be analyzed whether during that disturbance the system restoring forces are more than the disturbing forces or the other way around if the system restoring forces are more compared to disturbance the system will remain stable if the disturbance forces are larger compared to the restoring forces the system will remain uh, i mean the system will be pushed to the instability so that's important to to analyze the system within the time before the fault is clear so let's say this is an example of a single machine infinite bus where a generator is connected to an infinite bus through two parallel transmission lines and this is the transient reactance of the of the generator this is the i mean infinite bus where the magnitude of the voltage is fixed and angle is zero so now let's take the case and as we have discussed we need to analyze the system under three condition uh, the pre fault analysis of the system the faulted when the fault appear and the post fault analysis so now uh, let's talk about these three conditions so uh, equivalently because these are two transmission lines so it can be i mean you know these are in parallel so we can take the uh, parallel i mean combination and we can find the equivalent inductive reactance so it is now i mean the simplified pre fault system where first we take the parallel i mean in accounting that the two lines are parallel we find the equivalent inductive reactance and we add that to the uh, transient reactance of the of the machine of the generator to get the total uh, reactance and that is shown here 
So we have an infinite bus. This is the infinite bus. That is the generator. And in between we have this, uh, I mean, transmission line. So this is the total inductive reactance of the generator and that of the transmission lines. This is the infinite bus and that is the generator. So as I mean, even before I discuss this uh, figure, where the electrical power varies, this is the whole profile. This is the, these are the operating points. So the pre-fault system has two equilibrium points. This is the analysis of the pre-fault system. The left point is stable. Why it is stable, I will talk now about that. And the right point is unstable. And this is, uh, I mean, the expression where the load angle can be determined, knowing that the mechanical power is constant. And I mean, from this particular expression, the load, the angle can be uh, fine. And as you know, that uh, this uh, this is uh, I mean the 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 it's a it's a second order equation. So we will have two values of the of the load angle because it's I mean the the, the, the differential equation describing the system is of second order. So we will have two possible values of the of the angle. So. I mean these are shown here. So before the default, let's say, uh, either the system can operate at this point or at this point. This point is stable and this point is unstable. Why? Now let me discuss that. As I, as I discussed that, uh, although these contents are related to another course, but to make your understanding clear, I'm talking about the uh, stable and unstable point with the help of these uh, representations. So as I discussed that this is the case of the synchronous machines, synchronous machines where the two fields are rotating, the rotor field as well as the stator field. So now if one as I mentioned that uh, this is the north pole of the stator field and this is the south pole and correspondingly we have the north pole of the rotor and south pole of the rotor because in the synchronous machine the two opposite pole gets locked. So that's why the speed remains constant even if the load is varied with an ex acceptable limit. So let's say that is the, I mean the, the uh, speed remains constant and the angle can vary which can vary due to the increase or decrease in the load or can vary as I discussed uh, when uh, let's say a fault or a disturbance appears. So now if we look to this case, I mean there is an angle between the stator and the rotor opposite poles. Now let's, let's take the case. Let's say that is the south pole of the of the stator, and let's say when the uh, load, let's say, uh, or when let's say this, the, this during the disturbance, when this angle will increase, or let let assume that the load is getting increasing. Let's let's talk let's talk in I mean uh, simple case, so then you will hopefully understand it. As I discussed, I mean during the disturbance, the load angle will vary. So let's now talk the variation of the load angle with respect to the to the load. Let's say the load is increasing. So then the angle will increase. Or during the default, I mean as I discussed during the disturbance, the angle will vary. So let's say it I mean after the disturbance appear, or let's say after the load after the load increases, this angle will increase. Because I discussed that the, 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 the mechanical, I mean the electrical power, it is related. With the with the with the load angle, so uh, if the load angle increases, the electrical power must also increase. So let me let me find the text. I will uh, discuss that. So as I as I mentioned that uh, the electrical power. Uh, is related with the with the load angle. So if the load angle varies, it means the electrical power will also vary. And uh, now, if the load angle vary, it means a situation may appear. Let's say now one can see this angle is less than ninety degree. But let's say now we uh, and the, the there is a uh, I mean locking between the opposite poles. Let's say if we increase the load and as I discussed even uh, that 
This point is the theoretical point where the power is maximum. We never in practice, I mean, uh, operate the generator at this point. Never. Why? I will I will discuss that. So I mean, in practice, you, the angle load angle is kept far below the uh, ma theoretical maximum limit. Now let's say we take the case of the 90 degree, which is theoretical maximum. So now. Here we will have north pole, here we will have south pole of the, this is the, of the, of the rotor. Now as I mentioned before, this is the south pole of the stator, this is the north pole of the rotor, there will be locking between the two poles. If the load angle, let's say, increases, the north pole will move away from the south pole. And the opposite south pole will get closer to the south pole. And now, now let's say if the case is like that, where the angle is 90 degree, where the north and the south pole of the rotor are equidistant from the south pole of the of the stator. This is the stator. Let's say this is the stator south pole, and these are the poles of the rotor. So now, as one can see, if the angle is 90 degree, the the attractive forces and the repulsive forces will be equal. If the angle is less than 90 degree, obviously the attractive forces will be more compared to the repulsive forces. So that's why the two poles get locked. And if the angle increases till we reach 90 degree, then the attractive and repulsive forces will be of the same magnitude. And let's say, that's why I call it theoretical maximum point. Because even if we increase the load just of a small value after this situation, then it means that the south pole will then be more close to the south pole of the stator compared to the north pole. So what will happen? I mean then the repulsive forces will be more compared to the attractive forces. And if that is the situation, it means that no more locking of the opposite poles. Because if, it, if the south poles get close to the south pole compared to the north pole, it's I mean repulsion. No more locking of the opposite pole. And that's why when there is no more locking, because in synchronous, synchronous machine, it is must that the opposite poles get locked. That's why they have a constant speed. If the uh, locking of the poles gets lost, synchronism is lost. That's why I discussed that this is the theoretical maximum limit. If, it ex if the angle exceeds just by a small value, the synchronism is lost. That's why in practice, never this angle the, operator, the generator is never operated at this angle. It is kept far below this point. So that, I mean, even the reason is that if, let's say, uh, uh, if we are closer to this point, it means that the difference of the angle that can, let's say, vary during the fault is small. If it is, let's say, the operating point is here, then this difference is larger before we lose the, uh, the synchronism. And if the more closer we I uh, mean, keep the angle during the normal operation, the smaller is the difference that should be maintained even when the fault appears. So that's why this point is kept far below the, the theoretical maximum limit in order to, to ensure that even if the, uh, let's say, the uh, large disturbances appear, still we have a margin for, I mean, maintaining the stability of the system during, I mean, the declaring time. So, this is the theoretical maximum limit and that's why, I mean, it's here mentioned that the left point is stable, this point is unstable because then, as I discussed, that at this point where the angle is more than 90 degree, the repulsive forces are more compared to the attractive forces and there is no synchronism at that point. So, that's why here it's mentioned that the right point, the right operating, I mean, the right point is unstable. So, now, uh, uh, let's say th this was basically the uh, the pre-fault system where we have this operating point and the system is stable. If the fault appear at this point, then this is the resultant system. Because you know the current always follow the path of the, le the least resistance. So then the power path will be like that. So it means that during this fault, no power can be transferred from the generator to the system. No power is transferred to this bus, where this is the infinite bus afterwards we have, 
I mean transmission lines and loads and I mean uh, this infinite bus because we can consider anything after that bus. So in that case when let's say the fault appear at this point so then the power is grounded or I mean the, the, during this fault no power can be transferred from generator to the system or to the infinite bus. So that is the uh, condition during the fault and after the fault is cleared removal of line when we the car the fault is clear let's say the relay detect the fault and it send the signal to the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker open the line so then the system again changes because if you look here before the fault we uh, had two uh, transmission lines before the fault when there was no fault there were two transmission lines after the fault appear and we clear the fault we have then just one transmission line. So if the transmission line is one, and if we look to the to the uh, I mean to the expressions, if we look to the to the expression for the power that we discussed even uh, before, we uh, I mean uh, discuss that the smaller if we look here, the smaller the uh, value of x, then the uh, power uh, obviously will have I mean larger values if this value let's say for the all other parameters constant if this value increases the power will uh, decrease in other words as I mentioned that if we have two transmission if we have two transmission lines let's say if we have two transmission lines uh, we have more uh, I mean uh, uh, capability of the system to transmit power or the power transfer capability of the system is more because we have two tr parallel transmission lines. If one line gets removed after the fault, the capacity of the system will reduce. So that's why I mean after clearing the fault, the system again changes and now this will be the equivalent representation only considering just one line. So the power flow capacity or the power uh, I mean yeah the power flow capacity will reduce because now we have just one line because the other line is removed due to the fault. So now let's say showing all these three conditions the pre I mean the post fault during the fault when there was no transfer of power and after the fault when the capacity reduces. So here all the scenarios are shown. Uh, that is the post fault profile this profile is the post fault I mean uh, sorry the, the pre fault the pre fault when the fault didn't appear so that is the profile one can see the power profile is I mean have this uh, curve where the amount of the power let's say even at the theoretical maximum is larger uh, in the rest of all the cases so this is the profile of the power during uh, the normal condition or, due, or before, I mean before the fault or what we call pre fault. When the fault appear as I discussed that there will be now transfer of power. So then this is the fault. This is the electrical power during the default. And the important point is that when the, the electrical power which is this value. If this is zero, it means we will. This is the double order derivative of the load angle. We have discussed that before. Now, if the electrical power gets smaller or gets, I mean, if it reduces, then we will have the variation in the in the angle because if that side, I mean, uh, let's say. Uh, varies there will must be variation on the on the left side and then the angle will change and as I discussed the angle during that time when the fault appear must not exceed the theoretical maximum limit otherwise the system will get or will be pushed into instability so during the time when the fault appear or when there is a variation in the electrical power either due to the increase in the load or decrease in the load or when the fault appear there will be variation on the right side correspondingly variation on the left side 
and that variation means the load angle will change and if the load angle changes and it exceeds the theoretical limit during that transient period the system will be moved to the unstable region because we discussed that the point on the on the right side that we discussed here it is unstable point so this point is unstable so it means that even during the transient portion the uh, restoring forces should be capable enough of keeping the angle below the theoretical maximum limit so anyhow as i discussed that during the during the, the fault or during the disturbance there is a variation on the right side corresponding there will be variation on the left side which means the angle will vary so now these three curves during the fault post fault and pre fault are shown and as one can see that if after the uh, fault is cleared where one line is removed the power transfer capacity will reduce that's why now the profile after the 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 clearing clearing of the fault is like that and now one can see before the fault the operating point was this one after the fault is cleared and assuming that it still keep the system i mean as a stable then the operating point is this one and even the transfer capacity of the system reduces because now we have one line so during the fault no power transfer and even after the fault is cleared where one line is removed now the power transfer capacity will reduce and also the operating point will now move to this point this is still stable but it is different than the previous point so with this now i end this lecture and uh, i end the discussion on the uh, i mean the transient stability we will start the next lecture with equal area criteria which i i mean uh, which i discussed that we don't need to solve the uh, the equation the differential equation describing the the system so we did we don't need to i mean uh, solve the uh, swing equation it is the the other method which is the equal area criteria method it is based on the graphical representation so we will discuss that in the next recorded lecture so i mean to quickly summarize the lecture i started discussing the stability and then we i mean discuss the two classes or the two categories of the stability one is stable one is unstable stable i mean st uh, the st st steady state stability and the transient stability these are the two classes of the of the stability in the steady state stability we only consider small changes where the system uh, remains stable and uh, in the transient stability we consider large disturbances either a fault or a sudden removal of a heavy load or a sudden addition of a heavy load so as the load will because we discussed that we will throw out this the the study period we will consider the mechanical power to be equal to be constant sorry to be constant to be fixed and with the fault only the electrical power is changing so with that since this expression uh, describe the system and it's a second order expression so during the uh, transient period where a fault will appear or a load will be removed or added the right side will change correspondingly the angle will change and once the angle changes so then uh, we need to analyze the system and we analyze the system in three condition pre fault during the fault and after the fault so uh, i mean uh, this was the discussion even i solved an example or i discussed an example to make theoretical understanding more clear to you so now with this i end this lecture and i would say thank you very much for your attention and see you inshallah in the next recorded lecture assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh